Now let's see the different types of operations which are applicable in real numbers, mostly the rational numbers and irrational numbers which play a vital role in simplification process. For example, I have two real numbers. Say my x is root 3 plus root 2 and my y is root 3 minus root 2 and I wanted to know clearly x is an irrational number and my y is also an irrational number. So now let's see the, what the product would yield in its simplification through operations using real number properties. So when I multiply the two irrational numbers x times y, I find that x being root 3 plus root 2 is substituted for x and root 3 minus root 2 is substituted for y respectively in the product. Now clearly I identify that this is in the form a plus b times a minus b which equals a square minus b square as learnt in the lower classes. So a plus b times a minus b is a square minus b square therefore root 3 plus root 2 times root 3 minus root 2 is root 3 square minus root 2 square is what we get in the form of the product. So root and squares cancel. So root 3 square is 3 and root 2 whole square is 2. Therefore my product xy is 3 minus 2 which is 1. Now clearly I identify that for two irrational numbers when multiplied is giving me a rational number. Moreover it's an integer or a natural number or a whole number. So the product of two irrational numbers can yield a rational number is how we identify the concept of rational numbers connected. Therefore my outcome is product of two irrational numbers can yield a rational number. Therefore, product of two irrational numbers can yield a rational number, but it is not always true because it is not always possible that two irrational numbers can yield a rational number, only sometimes when the formulas can be exactly applied, is how we understand the concept of product of two rational numbers yielding a rational number. What about two rational numbers when multiplied? The product of two rational numbers cannot yield an irrational number because it is its own respective rational numbers when multiplied which always gives a rational number. But the only exception is two irrational numbers when multiplied may give a rational number but two rational numbers when multiplied always gives a, a new rational number. Now let's see how a number root x for any x belonging to real numbers be represented on a number line. So I would like to represent root x on a number line for x being a positive real number of course. Roots are defined only for positive real numbers. Now that in the previous session we have discussed about locating root 2, root 3, root 4, root 5 etc using the square root diagram or the square root construction of a polygon through which we can locate only using the geometrical concept for integers. If you have a fraction, say I have something like root of 4.9 which I would like to locate on the number line, then it becomes quite difficult. Or how I can measure the length this root 4.9 on the distance is what is the biggest challenge out here. Therefore, let's see in today's session about how we can represent a root of a real number on a number line. So imagine before this, we need to go through some construction process to understand the representation more better. For example, I take this to be the distance AB, which is some x unit. 
imagine my distance AB is X units and from B, there's the line AB is extended further one more unit so that the distance BC is one unit. So I have here AB is X units and BC is one unit is what we get with the complete number line from A to C. Now let me say the midpoint of C, AC is at O. So here is the midpoint of the line AC which exactly is at O. So O is the midpoint of the line segment AC through which AO is equal to OC. Now, let's try to construct the different key factors in understanding on how we can identify root of x using the number line. Say for example, I take the length OC or OA and then try to construct a semicircle using the radius from compass O to A. So with radius as OA, here is my semicircle, the radius being OA. Now let me just draw a perpendicular from B so that it cuts 90 degrees at passing through B. So I drop a perpendicular onto B which cuts the semicircle say at some point D. So D is the point where the line, the perpendicular line passing through B cuts the semicircle at D. Let me join OD. So here I have a right angle triangle OBD through this construction. Now how do I measure the distance OB? I would like to measure the distance OB. So I see clearly that OB is OC minus BC. So the distance OB is the entire radius minus this which gives me the distance OB. Therefore my OB, my OC is the radius which I need to find out here. So let's see what will be the radius OC. Now because my diameter AC is x plus 1 because it accounts to x and 1 unit, my whole distance AC is x plus 1. So x plus 1 being the diameter, the radius OC is exactly half of AC and therefore it is exactly half of x plus 1 because AC is already substituted to be x plus 1, is already simplified to be x plus 1. Therefore my OC is x plus 1 by 2. So I just substitute this to be x plus 1 by 2 minus BC which is 1. Substituting for OC and BC respectively, I get this on further simplification to be x plus 1 minus 2 by 2 and this gives me x minus 1 by 2. Therefore, my distance OB is x minus 1 by 2. Therefore, my distance OB is x minus 1 by 2 and my distance OD is nothing but distance OA which is already identified to be half of this. So OC is nothing but OA and the distance OD is equal to distance OA which is already identified to be x plus 1 by 2 because this and this and this are the radius. The radii of the circle are equal. Therefore my OB is x minus 1 by 2 and my OD which is simplified out here is x plus 1 by 2. Now I have OB and OD through which I am going to find the length OBD. To find the length BD we are going to use the triangle right angle triangle OBD and then through Pythagoras theorem let's try to find the length BD. 
So to find BD, I take right angled triangle OBD in which I have OD square equals OB square plus BD square using the Pythagoras theorem. Now OD square is x plus 1 by 2 whole square because I have OD which is substituted out here. My OB is x minus 1 by 2 whole square which on substitution gives me this plus BD square. So I take BD square to the left and all the terms to the right and simplify so that I get this to be BD square equals x plus 1 by 2 whole square minus x minus 1 by 2 whole square. Now this on further expansion gives me x plus 1 whole square by 4 minus x minus 1 whole square by 4. To be continued, it has x plus 1 whole square by 4 minus x1, x minus 1 whole square by 4, which can be simplified using the LCM. Therefore, I get this to be BD square equals x plus 1 whole square minus x minus 1 whole square by 4, which on further simplification gives a square plus 2ab plus b square minus a square minus 2ab plus b square by 4 which on further simplification gives x square plus 2x plus 1 minus x square plus 2x minus 1 whole by 4 this gets cancelled and 1 gets cancelled and we have 4x by 4 which is x therefore my bd square is x which implies the length bd is root x units. So my length bd is root x units is how we construct using this geometrical process. So finally I get my length bd which is root x units. So using this bd finally I try to identify that using any real number x on this dimension of ab I can construct root of that real number through this distance. The derived formula which already gives the length bd is indirectly the square root of this number is how we identify the geometrical process out here. If you like this video please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.